Welcome back. This will not be an unending video about circles. Our objectives are to define conic sections. We'll explore the definition of circles. We'll determine the equation of a circle. We'll find the x and y intercepts of a circle. And then we'll show you how to use the graphing utility to sketch a circle. Let's begin by defining conic sections. A conic section, or simply a conic, is the intersection of a plane and a double napped cone. A double napped cone, as you can see here, is just cones stacked on top of each other with their uh, vertices. Notice that the formation of the four basic conics, the intersecting plane does not pass through the vertex of the cone. So you can see here in this upper left, if we have a plane that's goes through the cone that's parallel to the, we'll call it the opening, that's going to create a circle. If it's not parallel, it's going to create an ellipse. If it cuts through the top of the cone, as we see here on the lower left, we've got a parabola. And then if we cut vertically through both top and bottom, then we end up with a hyperbola. And those are both wings of the hyperbola are created by the top cone and the, the bottom circular cone. top and bottom of the cone is the base. When the plane does not pass through the vertex, the resulting figure is a degenerate conic, as shown below. So our degenerate conics are really just a point, a line, and two intersecting lines. Let's explore the definition of a circle. The circle is simply the collection of all points, x and y, that are equidistant from a fixed point or the center. And the center, we use the ordered pair h and k. So here's our book definition. And you can see here's our diagram of our circle uh, with our point x and y on the circle, our center labeled h and k, and our radius, the distance between the center and any point on the circle labeled with r. So our radius, again, is the distance between the center and any point on the circle. And we can calculate the length of our radius, r, by simply using our distance formula, taking our x-coordinate, subtracting h, and squaring it, right, using our distance formula, x minus h squared, plus, and then our y-coordinate, our change in y's, y minus k, quantity squared equals our, the length of our radius. Well, if we go down here a little bit further, if we square both sides of our distance formula, get rid of the square root, we end up with x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Well, that is our equation of a circle. It's just created by finding using the distance formula and unsquare rooting it. And if the, the center of our circle happens to be the origin, then our equation is just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Couple things to note, x minus h quantity squared and y minus k quantity squared are both perfect square trinomials. And if we end up with x plus h quantity squared or y plus k quantity squared. That's really x minus a minus h or y minus a minus k. And that really comes from the ordered pair negative h negative k. That would just mean that uh, the location of our of the center of our circle is has a negative x coordinate and or a negative y coordinate. And in our standard formula x minus h squared and y minus k squared, our ordered pair our coordinates are both positive x and positive y. And of course, you could have, you know, one could be negative and one could be positive, and that's just going to impact the signs. Our third objective is to find the standard equation of a circle, and it creates our first sample problem. The point 1, 4 is on the circle whose center is negative 2, negative 3. Write the standard form of the equation of the circle. So in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is determine the radius of the circle. So we grab our two points, both happen to be you know x's and y's, and we do our distance formula. 1, find out our change in x. How far is it from 1 to negative 2? It's 3 units, and we square it. 
and then from 4 to negative 3, that's 7 units, and we square it. Let's take the square root of that using our distance formula, and our radius is the square root of 58. Second, we'll substitute the coordinate for the center of our circle, or our h and k, into the formula. Our center was negative 2, negative 3. Our radius, which we calculated above, is the square root of 58. So we put that into our formula. We get x minus a minus 2 squared plus y minus a minus 3 squared equals the square root of 58 squared. So there's that x minus a minus 2 becomes x plus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared equals the square root of 58 squared, or just 58. And we have the equation of our circle. In our next sample problem, we want to sketch the circle given by x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. We want to identify the center and the radius of the circle. So remember earlier I talked about our equation of the circle had perfect square trinomials. Well, we can get perfect square trinomials by testing our memory banks a little bit and remember the process for completing the square. So we're going to gather our x's, so x squared minus 6x, and to complete the square I need a blank space because I need a constant there. And then with my y's, plus y squared minus 2y plus blank. And I'm going to take my negative 6 and I'm going to move it, or my positive 6, I'm going to move it to the other side, get negative 6. So if you remember, when we complete the square, we're manufacturing a value here. So what we do to the left side of the equation, we have to do the right side of the equation. So I'm going to be adding values to the left side, so I'm going to have to add those values also to the right side. So when I complete the square, we take half of our b value, negative 6 over 2, and we square it, which is 3 squared, so I'm adding 9, and I'm taking half of my b value again, and I'm squaring it, so that's negative 1 squared, which is just 1, so I have to add that to the other side. And my perfect square trinomial is just x minus 3 quantity squared, and my perfect square trinomial for y is y minus 1 quantity squared equals negative 6 plus 9 plus 1 is equal to 4. And there I have my equation of my circle. I've got my h is 3, my k is 1, and my r squared is 4, so my r, my radius is 2. So I've determined the radius is 2. It's just the square root of the 4. And then I just can go ahead and plot my points. So my center was at an x of 3 and a y of 1. So there's the center of my circle. My radius is 2, so from my center I might go up two units, and down two units, and I go to the right two units, and to the left two units, and I will have, oh, an approximate circle that looks something like that. That's not a very good circle, but you get the general idea. So my points here are, I think that's 3, 3, this point over here was 5, 1. This point over here was 3, negative 1. And the point on the left was 1, 1. Objective 4 is to find the x and y intercepts of our circle. So you may recall the intercepts, the x and y intercepts occur, well, when we're on the x and y axis. The x-intercept occurs when we're on the x-axis. Well. When we're on the x-axis, y has to be 0, and vice versa. When we're on the y-axis, our x has to be 0. So to find the x-intercepts, we let y equal to 0. We grab the equation of our circle here. We put 
zero in for the y value, so I put zero in for y, and I get x minus 4 quantity squared, and this just became 4, which I subtracted from both sides. So I get x minus 4 quantity squared equals 12. I square root both sides, and I get x minus 4 equals plus or minus 12, and I add 4 to both sides, and I like to tuck that in front of the plus or minus. So x equals 4 plus or minus. And we simplified the square root of 12 as 2 square root of 3, but the square root of 12 is kind of handy. We should know that is approximately 3.5. And that could come in handy for us in a few minutes. Then to find the y-intercept, we let x equal 0 and repeat the process. So this just becomes negative 4 squared, which is 16. So I subtract 16 from both sides. I square root both sides. I get y minus 2 equals 0. I get y equals 2. Well, when does y equal 2? When x is 0. So that's the ordered pair 0, 2. So that is my y-intercept of my circle. My x-intercept, a little bit tougher to graph, 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3, or the square root of 12, or about 3.5. I go out to 4, and I go 3.5 units to the right, and 3.5 units to the left, and those are my intercepts for my circle. And it turns out that this particular circle, uh, I didn't graph the center, will look something like that. And there's a much better picture of it down here, showing it on what would be a graphing calculator. So you can see our intercepts pretty much where I graph them. Our final objective is to use our graphing calculator to graph an equation. Now because we've got squares here for x and y, and our graphing calculator can only graph right now y to the first, we need to solve our equation for y. Beginning with x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 4. I'm going to subtract the x minus 3 quantity squared from both sides. So I get my y minus 1 squared equals 4 minus the quantity of x minus 3 squared. I need to undo the square, so I square root both sides, which gives me y minus 1 equals, now remember your plus or minus, when you square root both sides, we got a plus or minus everything, so plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x minus 3 quantity squared. Add 1 to both sides. So I'm going to take that 1 and I'm going to put it right in there. So I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus the quantity x minus 3 squared. So I've got two different y's. y1 is 1 plus the square root of 4 minus x minus 3 quantity squared. And y2 is y minus. And I'm going to graph these two separately. And what they will do is when I graph them, they'll create one will become the top half of my circle, and the other one will become the bottom half of my circle. It is recommended that we use the square setting. So we will take a look at that in just a moment as I pull up the graphing calculator. So here I've got the graphing calculator. I've got the two equations that I have plotted and I've entered them in. So 1 plus the square root of 4 minus x minus 3 quantity squared and then my 1 minus. So I'm going to have my, my top portion and my bottom portion of my circle. The window, they wanted a, a square window. Um, there is a zoom square which doesn't always work real, real well. It still needs to be adjusted sometimes. I'm going to use the one that the textbook recommended. My x values are going to be from negative 1 in the minimum to 8 on the maximum. Uh, I can count by 
ones on that, and then my y's, they recommend from negative two to four. And I can go ahead and graph my circle. So that concludes our introduction to circles, and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.